Well, I love that umbrella guy. <laughs> My wife and I love that umbrella guy. Oh, we love that umbrella guy. So if you love that umbrella guy too, make sure that you're subbed. Make sure that you hit that bell for daily notifications. And if you want to go further, you're under no obligation to do so. But say you love that umbrella guy and want to help out in a different way. Well, there are links in the description below. One of those is the case of the Littlest Umbrella. There are two comic books attached to that. And in this, it basically is us answering gatekeepers. This is currently in demand. That means that it won't be around too much longer and when it's gone well it's gone this it was our way of challenging the status quo you know we've been told that well if you pay your dues and you basically walk lockstep then maybe just maybe people will help you fail no thanks instead we wanted to succeed we decided to go out and compete with people who told us that we can't compete with them and well we were met with opposition from pros from brigaders and on but you know what people made that possible i thank people for that we'll talk a little bit more at the end of the video but yeah if you're looking for options out there they are indeed available so today we are talking about this filing and this it's kind of interesting to look at because of exactly how this is structured this is the answer by monica and ron talking about why exactly they spread so much gossip you know because other people did it because other people have in the past and well when you look at the filing here it's quite interesting to look over for example i mean when we start out for many for years women nationwide have complained publicly that plaintiff vic mignana sexually harassed intimidated or groped them so we see sourcing here who's the source pretty ugly little liars or better known as pool now pool compiled this list that's kind of interesting to look at to see exactly where they're wanting to come from now they've gone in they've compiled things like long-standing quote-unquote rumors apparently rumors are part of that they've gone in and taken shots at resin bull rangers while taking quote-unquote testimony out there it's saying oh man the culture of the resin bull rangers it could actually be toxic that's right you know because that that's the way that you need to go you also have portions on homophobia and anti-semitism because yeah you know that terrible dude out there used the words a holocaust instead of you know talking about the holocaust itself going forward with that too he wouldn't sign certain types of work he has a certain faith standard and well that makes him a monster you go on and on with this his diva behavior and on and this stuff it's supposed to justify what exactly was done to this guy i mean you see them talking about oh you know fans minors and people they put up things like here are videos and these videos they're put up by fans showcasing the experience they had having fun with with it but hey you know what monsters there they also they link to other places out there for uh, example they link to a couple that we're going to see farther into the document and yeah when you go in and you start looking at some of the stupidity the insanity to it that's it so i mean that's as far as it goes there hmm good stuff there hmm good stuff indeed that yep that's proof. That's all the proof you need these days. Continuing, though, the complaints come from underage fans attending conventions and respected voice actors who have experienced his degrading behavior degrading behavior it is no surprise that Mignana now intends to blame everyone but himself for this misconduct you know because those things that are being said him getting called a p to the e to the d to the o oh yeah that's going to go in and it's going to make things great you see here skipping this part about what he's done and on december 2018 following the premiere of dragon ball super broly which figure features mignana's vocal work accusations of sexual harassment some of which included minors began surfacing huh is that how you remember that because i seem to remember 280 character culture deciding to get together and have a little cultural assassination there hmm 
Then you go through, you see exactly again where they're going to source to. Like Dear Vic, well, we messed up his name. And this place, this place is well known for people answering with trolling. But hey, that's one of those wonderful sources. Tumblr blog, yeah, 280 character culture personified. You see the stories in there too. And I would really recommend people go and check that out because my God, what a mess. They also also, they note Source 4. So looking at Source 4 here is a document, a Google document, where of course they add slash edit to the end because, yeah, that's the way that you should have gone. Instead, possibly you should have gone in and saved it. Possibly you should have gone in, maybe downloaded it, and put together your own link to it. But what that did, essentially, is showcase how other people in 280 character culture came together and basically said whatever they felt like saying, because, hey, that works out. Then we get the talking about Beth Elderkin and io9. You know, because io9 was that trusted source. I mean, one of those Channel Awesome alumni coming in, not actually telling entire stories. In fact, cut the entirety of Vic Mignogna down to basically these uh, few sentences where you had answers that he had given because at the time he thought that these people might actually listen, but no. Nope, wasn't included there. Yeah, we have all gone through that. It has been a very, very interesting article indeed. Continuing here, when the sexual harassment allegations became known, the production companies who Mignana worked for uh, conducted their own investigations. When their investigations were concluded, they terminated Mignana and publicly announced they would no longer work with him. Yeah, actually what happened there, as we well know, because I-09, the source you quoted, and because of one of the people attached here, they they had already gone in and they had already started their quote unquote investigation. When they did that, your own client here, uh, Monica, said they were afraid that this, it would just quote, get swept under the rug again. So, of course, had to go out and brigade because burning things down is the way to play. You see them, them talking about rooster teeth here. Then you see Funimation being listed. And yeah, what exactly came up during that Funimation? announcement, oh, publicly saying that this guy did not stand for diversity and on, didn't reflect that company, so... Hmm. Despite the numerous voice actors and individual victims that have come forward and publicly described their own sexual har assault or harassment by Mignogna, Mignogna brings suit against defendants uh, Rial and Jamie Marshy. For some reason, they have drawn the ire of Mignogna, who has led a public campaign attempting to demonize defendants. So now Mignogna is leading a campaign to go out and demonize these folks. I mean, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting how that's framed? A review of Mignogna's petition fails to identify what defamatory or otherwise tortious conduct defendants are liable for. For the most part, it complains of likes and retweets of other people's opinions. Furthermore, Mignogna does not describe any casual connection between defendants' actions and Mignogna's termination from Funimation, Rooster Teeth, or any other company or venue. Huh, well, that's easily described there. Look at exactly how all of this brigading and getting that megaphone together actually cost the guy appearances when it came to, I don't know, convention after convention after convention. Look at what they're going out and what they're seeding in public now. The best way to do that is to go through their likes and retweets. I've been doing that recently. One of them, you know, talking about Marshy, has been saying, Saying about Monica, hey, while uh, even if he wins out there, Monica is going to get invited to more and more conventions, and him, he's just going to fade into obscurity. Isn't that something? They know that they did damage. They know it. They have been publicly suggesting this idea because, hey, even if he wins, damage already done. So pretending here, and I understand that that's part of the game for these folks, pretending in that 
But yeah, that doesn't work out at all. You can see the way the rest of this comes together as well. But what I found really interesting about this was what was utilized as sourcing material. Because we're talking about a Tumblr blog. You know, a Tumblr blog that, when you go and examine it, is garbage. It is absolute garbage. You go and you look at Funimation and Rooster Teeth's uh, statements. Funimation made a really good one there. That one's definitely worth checking out because of the way that it sets up. You see the... Uh, the other places that he was canceled from and on. Like I said, when you look at this stuff too, this, this is supposed to be some end-all be-all. The Michelle statement, that's supposed to be something you link into and say that, that it actually allows us to go out and to bring gravity, you know, the gravity of destroying someone's job to the table. See, this kind of stuff, when you see it, I understand, again, that this person's job is to try to deflect this and to say, hey, what did they do wrong? But really, the better question is, what did they do right? I mean, they went out. They put out, both of them, statements into the public, one of them about hair pulling, the other one about hair pulling and an awkward kiss, also adding to that threat upon threat. Ron additionally went out and mimed pretty much every story he could find and other things that weren't even suggested in the stories. You know, he would talk about voice actors and on, but he also talked about this guy not only being, well, a P to the E to the D to the O, going out and assaulting certain folks, but also, like this suggestion, leading a campaign in order to take people down. That current year suggestion, it's going to be really interesting to see how that stands up to scrutiny when we actually see courtroom involvement because these folks, they've been allowed to do stuff like this for far too long. That's why these lines are important too, why they're drawn in the sand and why they have to actually work because if they don't, then we have a problem. We not only have a cultural problem, but we have a bigger problem. And that bigger problem is, well, people are allowed to do this again and again and again. And there's no repercussion to it. I mean, already we see multiple brigaders that were involved in this moving on to other targets. You know, I've looked at one person, you know, one of those that people pretty much know out there. Moved on to two targets so far. Another person has moved on to people within the cosplay community. They've moved on to people that are outside of that. I mean, they just keep bringing in people because they know they can do this with impunity. That's why this stuff, again, is important. But I don't know. You tell me what you think about all of this insanity. I mean, linking to pool of all things and saying, yeah, that, that's the place we want to. Because you know what? They put together a few points here and, you know, they actually link to a few websites there. Therefore, that's actually solid information. My God, I tell you. But anyhow, you tell me what you think. Again, if you like this kind of content, make sure that you're subbed. Make sure you hit that bell for daily notification. Like the videos you like. That definitely helps out. And if you want to go further, under no obligation to do so, but there are links in the description. There's a PayPal tip jar. You also have a Patreon. And then you have this as well. The Case of the Littlest Umbrella. Two comics. One is an all-ages of crafty and tell involving the umbrella guy detective here and his littlest sidekick you know the sidekick you sometimes hear in the story time when we're doing uh, live shows also we have the other comic that is based in this that comic book yeah it is a satirical approach to the insanity we've seen within comic books for well quite a bit of time now you know we're talking about two years and counting and this it basically it pokes fun at certain people while also going out and, you know, saying, hey, these people, they actually stood up and they tried to evoke change. If this is something that you want to back, check that out. But like I say, thank you for looking at it. Let me your thoughts on this stuff too. As I said, I'd like to know what you think about that pro or con. You don't have to agree with anything. You know, you have your own opinions on it, just like anyone else, you know, so let me know what you think on that. In closing, I appreciate you showing up. 
That's one thing that a lot of people seem to have forgotten here. You folks, you make endeavors possible. I mean, without the audience, without that, all of these endeavors, whether that's anime, comics, or on, they all fall flat, you know, because no one cares, and, well, everything surely folds. So I want to end by saying thank you. I appreciate you, and, uh, you know, we'll be doing this again soon. Thanks.